Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Smart Trucking Live. Glad you could you could join us today. Igor, glad to see you here. John, CJ, CJ, CG. Thank you for joining us. Grilled Bortle, always always a pleasure to see you, sir. Ted Lane, Thunderstorm eighty seven. Kelly Patterson's here. Hey, Kelly. 70 degree weather. I'm jealous already, Kelly. Josh Bulldog is here. Hey, Josh, how are you doing? Trucker Hershey says hello. Ted Lane, Andrew Jr. Matthew Pesco is here. Thank you for joining us, Matthew. Brian Walt. Hello, Brian. Glad to see you guys are all joining us. James, James Bratcher. Welcome, James. Good to see you here. Scott Kuhn. Gary the Galvanizing Gargoyle Riding in Trucks. Hello from Las Vegas. Hello, Gary. That's quite a handle. I bet you no one steals that on you. Giant Squid 222. Hello from South Dakota. Never Obey Trump <laughs> 2024. Dark Killer. Howdy. Matt. SoCal Sandman's made it from sunny Indiana. Hope you're hope you're doing good there, SoCal Sandman. Glad to see you here. Edward Atarian. Thank you for joining us, Edward. Yeah, we're all we're all doing good. Brendan Shirk, good to see you. Roger Zing. Shannon's here. Hey, Shannon, how's it going? How's how's it out in sunny Wyoming today, or is it sunny out there today? But glad to see you here. Brian Egon, Jake Thompson's here. CK here. Jonathan Mestro, hello from Ohio. Hey, Jonathan, glad you could join us. Jared Channel. In Joplin, Missouri, one of my favorite chrome shopping towns. Hey, Jared. Brandon Bullock, glad to see you joining us here. And Edward M., thank you all for joining us. Appreciate it. We we love we love chatting to you guys. We got we got some good stuff going on today that I want to talk about. And it all stemmed from a discussion. I get into these discussions all the time about driver pay. And the person that I was talking to says said to me, well. You know, it's unskilled labor. And you know, when someone says that to you, that right away, you're talking to someone that's never driven a truck before. Because anyone that's ever driven a truck knows what's involved and what's entailed, and that it is not unskilled labor. It's anything but. So now the Bureau of Labor Statistics, to back up what we've been saying all along, has determined that now truck driving is the number one most dangerous job in america and and we've known that for years the the job gets increasingly more dangerous every year because the accident tolls and rates just keep going up there's more and more traffic and it it was it was always a dangerous job because of all the factors involved in doing the job but it's becoming even more dangerous now than it's ever been before and I get browned off when I look at these mega carriers that are paying these guys cheap money and, and the mega carriers don't want to talk about this and they're, they're going to hate this live stream and I just don't care because the simple fact of the matter is this is a dangerous job and you've got to do it well and you's, you've got to be careful with it and it, it hardly seems worthy to me. To, the average wage of a truck driver now is $41,000 so half of those guys are making less of that. They're at the mega carriers, and I need these guys to fully understand and realize what it is that they've signed up for here, exactly what's involved in this job. There are serious dangers, risks, and liabilities in being a truck driver, and everybody needs to be aware of this. The experienced guys, we all know that, but sometimes we tend to get lax and forget it. The new guys haven't experienced all the things that this job can throw at them, and uh, they need to be careful, and we're going to discuss why. We're going to dive, deep dive into all the different angles the danger comes at you from when, when you're a truck driver, when you're a professional truck driver. So let's get into it. Now, before we even dive into the dangers of the job itself, we need to recognize the fact that the environment in which we do the job is itself dangerous. Now, 35,000 people died on the highways in, in the U.S. and Canada last year. And it only stands to reason that the more you're on the highways, the more you're putting yourself at risk. 
yet we're in a job that pays us by the mile for the most part, most of us are. And this encourages truck drivers to do more miles or as many miles as they possibly can. So truck drivers are upping the odds of putting themselves in a dangerous situation and they're in a dangerous environment. So right there, even, even just being on the interstate these days, there's some danger in that. And, and we need to recognize that. The public needs to recognize that. The mega carriers need to recognize that. And they don't want to talk about it, but it's the simple fact of the matter that trucking is a dangerous job. So let's let's start now. Let's look at the different areas. Before you get started, tell them how you want to do the chat. Yes, so what, what we'll do is we'll discuss one particular area of danger and then and then we'll do chat questions after that, after each one of these areas of discussion. So just you know accumulate your questions. We'll get to them and we'll we'll get to them after every different section so so we don't miss anything basically. I want to catch it all. So and at, and, and, at, and at the end as well, we'll we'll be taking more questions and discussing some of the things we've talked about today here. So, so tell them to hang in there. So hang in there with your with your questions and comments. We'll get to them a section at a time. Looking looking forward to your input, in fact, on them. So let's let's start with where most guys start their day. Most guys start their day at a loading dock or in the truck yard or in a warehouse because they're loading. So right right there, anybody that has ever worked around heavy equipment knows that this this type of an area is is, is a dangerous area because you're working with heavy equipment and anywhere where that stuff's moving around and you're involved in, there's the there's some inherent danger in that. Now I I personally have had a couple of friends hit by fork trucks, for instance while they were on the loading docks supervising the loading of their trailers. And you know, fork trucks, half the time they're backing up because the load's in front of them on the forks. So and so they got to spin around and look around every once in a while to see where they're going. I've had a few friends nailed by fork trucks, just guys not watching where they're going and, and running into drivers supervising their loading. Or they'll get the load on the truck or on the trailer, it'll be insecure and some of the load will topple on the driver as he's trying to load lock it in or, or something like that. We, we've all seen examples of this. We've seen examples of um, trailer trailer locks to the doors that have failed and the trailers started to walk away from the docks as they were loading. That's dangerous. We know that often guys have been hit just coming out from between two drop trailers and inadvertently stepping out into traffic, for instance, as a, as a shunt truck goes by or something like that. Just the shunt, the shunt guy isn't expecting a pedestrian to step out in front of him. Half the time, the truck driver's not paying attention. He, he forgets where he is, steps out in front of a truck. Or I, I personally have witnessed one time at a loading dock where a trailer was backing in and, and pinned, a, pinned a driver between the loading dock and the trailer, and it killed him. And it was an awful thing to witness. It's it's dangerous to be around heavy moving equipment and you've always got to be on your game but all sorts of accidents happen just at the warehouses and the shippers docks and the loading docks and even in the truck yards and the truck stops so right there just being around heavy equipment being in that environment that in itself presents a danger for truck drivers Any comments on that? Any discussion? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. So I, I'm I'm looking for if anyone has anything to say about that now. Falling through the floors of the trailer with my lift. Yeah, I I I saw that one time too, and the the trailer floor gave out. I saw another time where the fork truck driver was loading all the weight on the one side of the trailer, and the whole trailer toppled over it was a drop trailer and the whole trailer toppled over because it was it was heavy on one side and the landing gear just couldn't keep it up and the whole thing tipped over the the fork truck driver was hurt and the driver driver that was inside was also hurt there's there's all sorts of ways to get hurt just just in the warehouse area alone what about you open the door with the first 
freight freight if you're if you're getting to a receiver's dock and you're backing in you stop you pop open the doors so you can back the rest of the way in and if your freight isn't isn't properly secured or if you haven't been the guy that's loaded that trailer in the first place and secured the load half the time if it isn't locked in securely you can end up with that on your head we did a we did a video on that so uh it's there are all sorts of things that can go wrong at loading docks and warehouses and stuff like JP, that. JP makes a comment. I had a friend get hit by a car while offloading at a gas station. There, another another good example. Guys that deliver deliver gas, gas haulers for the service stations. <laughs> and there's cars just whipping around in those things Car all the time. Carrie Churchill, nails sticking out of the top of a flatbed. Wow. Yep. Yeah. There, it's It's... It's just a dangerous work environment. You've got to be on your game because there's all sorts of things like that, that nails sticking out of the top of a flatbed, stuff like that, stuff you're not expecting. Brian Walt, I fell through a rock plate. Wow. Lee Harvey got knocked off uh, forks, broke my arm in 98, and again in 2014. That time I broke my back. Jeez. Wow. You, you just can't, you can't get much worse than that. I've, I've seen... I saw at a warehouse one time when I was quite young, a guy came up a freight elevator in the fork truck, did an S turn onto the low dock and, and wheeled out through door four, thinking the trailer was in door four and the trailer was in door five. And this fork truck went sailing off into the clear blue sky, didn't, didn't sail very far. But here's this, I don't know what the truck would weigh, it was a battery powered fork truck, probably weighs 5,000 pounds seriously, seriously hurt the driver of the fork truck. And if there'd been anybody outside that bay, they would have been hit with the damn thing too. So it's just, it's a dangerous environment at the best of times. So you've just, you've got to be aware of the things that can go wrong. Just when you're not even expecting it. You think you're in a safe environment, but you're not ever really in a safe environment. You've got to be on your toes. Kelly Patterson noted, I missed it the first time around. He said uh, his boss was ran over someone's head. Wow. Wow. People people die in warehouse and loading dock accidents. I, I've, I've read about incidents where truck drivers were killed in truck stops just by, you know, some guy yakking on the CB or he's on his phone not paying attention and, and mows over a driver that's just trying to trying to wander into the restaurant to get dinner. You've got to be very careful around heavy equipment. That's that's one of the dangers of driving a truck because a truck is heavy equipment. That's what you're working with. That's what you're around, and you're around them for your job all the time. Undercover Boss 2020, hard cranking dolly handles, slipping and smacking you right in the face. <laughs> I've, I've had that happen to me. Joke. That's yeah. That's that's no joke. I split my forehead wide open. So yeah, just even even something as simple as cranking down your landing gear at the at the at the drop yard or something like that. And the drop yards themselves can be slippery. I've fallen and damn near busted my butt open on the ice in a in a drop yard. So all sorts of things to hurt you. Just just in that part of the job alone. Carrie Churchill also notes loading containers at the port. The containers are extremely heavy. I'll bet they are. Man, Carrie, yeah, good point. And, and have you ever seen some of those videos where the where the crane drops the container before it's on the truck properly? Holy smokes, just devastating. Just someone, devastating. someone has a comment in chat. This says, Dave, the best way not to become a statistic is to assume everyone else is an idiot hmm. until you know better. Well, that's 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 probably a good piece of advice. But not, not only do you have to kind of assume that everyone else is an idiot, you've also got to be just keeping your eyes open all the time. All the time, you've got to be aware, three hundred and sixty degrees around you, what's going on, and even sometimes what's what's coming from overhead, like like a crane with a container or something like that. Just e even the loading process. And, and, and Jake dangerous. Thompson, climbing into trailers with no steps. That's a big one. Climbing into trailers with no steps. And I know myself, I've I've taken a wipe off a slippery ICC bar trying to climb into my reefer. Done that more than once. In fact, that was such a problem that Great Danes started welding like a gridded step above the ICC bar. 
and ha putting handles on the back doors just as a safety feature so guys weren't hurting themselves getting in and out of their trailers. It's a really good idea. Wow. But yeah, all, all sorts of stuff can go wrong. God, even before you hit the road. So there, there's one huge area of danger right there that a lot of guys don't ever even think of. So OTR, Ogre, and Corgi. Back in the day, I used to be a rear loader garbage man for four years. That's how I paid off my first property. We had a guy get cut in half by somebody on a cell phone running into the back of the truck. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Just, yeah, just innocently doing his job. And yeah. some fool comes along and kills him, just in the in the split second. Just so you've got to be you've got to be on your toes. You've got to be on your game, all the time when you're around trucks, because you just and and on the roads, because you just don't know what the other guy's going to do. Okay, what's your next one? Moving on, the next thing. It's not just the warehouses and the loading docks that you can get hurt at. It's getting to and from the loading docks. Now. It's interesting to note, and I guess, I guess you know, everybody should know this, that when trucking companies bid on freight, they never particularly care where the warehouses are. And oftentimes in big cities, these big warehouses can be in god-awful neighborhoods, especially if they're old companies down in old sections of downtown and stuff like that. And just getting to the warehouse safely can be a challenge, and particularly if it's after dark. And I, I know one time myself, I got into an argument with the dispatcher that I was working for. I had been in to this warehouse in the daytime, and I, I'd gone through the neighborhood, and it was in Memphis. I'd gone through the neighborhood in Memphis in the daylight, and I'd seen what kind of a neighborhood I was dealing with, and you, you could see all the crack addicts, addicts sitting on the sidewalk and the curbs and stuff. So a few weeks later, they assigned me another load to this place. And I said, yeah, that's fine. Took the load and then found out the delivery appointment time was 3 a.m. I thought, well, that's just not a safe neighborhood to go into at 3 a.m. So I called my dispatcher, not thinking anything about it, saying, you know, I need to reschedule this because I don't want to be in that neighborhood at 3 a.m. I want to be in there when the sun comes up. Well, he was, he was ticked right off that I would have the audacity to ask him to change an appointment time. I guess that was just a big deal for him or something like that. And we had we had quite an argument over the over the phone. And he just didn't understand that. And he said to me, he said, Oh, we've never had any problems in there. And I'm I'm saying to him, it's not just in there at the warehouse, it's getting to the warehouse. There's five miles worth of slum to get off the interstate to the warehouse. So that's what I and he, you know, they didn't care. So you've kind of got to look after yourself. You've got to be aware, especially if it's a place that you haven't been before. There is huge potential danger and risk in going into bad neighborhoods. So you've got to do the research yourself. You can't rely on the trucking company to keep you out of trouble in a situation like that because they don't care where they send you. They're just sending you where the load is or where the load goes. And they don't think about your safety. You've got to be thinking about your safety. So do the research. Check out where you're going to be going. Call to see if it's safe. Don't go in at night if you can possibly avoid it because there's all sorts of danger just on the route in sometimes depending on where these places are. You don't know, you don't know what you're going to run into. So that's another serious problem with trucking. Another serious dangerous area of trucking is driving through some of these neighborhoods that you need to drive through. Lee Harvey comments in the chat about every produce house east of the Mississippi is downtown and is usually a nightmare. That's 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 exactly right. And I used to gauge all sorts of loads that I did as to whether or not it was east or west of the Mississippi. That was that was exactly how I did it. But you can even get ugly neighborhoods in Omaha, for instance, and I've been in an ugly one in Oakland, California. But yes, most major cities have ugly downtown areas. So be aware that when you're going to one of these hubs, there's a good chance that your level of risk is going to increase. And you've got to be aware of that. Try to minimize it as much as you possibly can. But don't expect the trucking company to protect you in a situation like that because they're the ones that are sticking you in there in the first place. So you've got to be aware of the fact 
that there is an eminent risk involved in some of the places where that they will ask you to go. Matt in the comment chats like delivering in downtown Toronto one time someone just threw themselves in front of my truck and thank God I was driving slow. Yeah, yeah, you get some you get some real crazies in, in some of these downtown core too. And you know, if you're down in there at one or two in the morning, half the time you're dealing with drunks coming out of bars. And I've had I've had issues like that where the drunks are climbing on your battery box and hanging on to your mirror arm and you don't know if what they're gonna do next. So yeah, it's a dangerous situation. Truck drivers, they're just expected to deal with that kind of stuff. Nobody points it out to them. Nobody pays them for that kind of risk, but it is an inherent part of the job. And you guys need to be aware of that. Kelly Patterson and SoCal Sandman both have mentioned that Oakland can be a scary place to deliver in the middle of the night. <laughs> yes, yes, it can. And I can I can vouch for that personally, having, having been in Oakland twice and wishing wishing either time I wasn't in there. So yes, and there's, you know, it's the same with LA. It's the same, it's the same in San Francisco. There are just bad areas that you don't want to go into. And carriers don't think of that or don't care about that when they send their trucks in. They're only concerned about the load and the revenue. Be aware, it's a dangerous spot sometime for truck drivers to be. The old shipping and receiving warehouses along the northeast coast are not designed for 53 footers. They're not designed for people to be in there at night either. That that northeast eastern seaboard section, that can be a really ugly place like Hunts Point in the Bronx and places like that. Infamous Online says you don't get paid enough to deal with the level of threats we deal with and that is exactly right. That is that is absolutely true and and that's that's what I'm harping on these mega carriers about because, you know, they're barely paying enough for a guy to scrape by half the time, especially the new guys. And yet sometimes it's the new guys they're sending into the, into the worst spots because all the older guys know not to take those loads. And the new guys don't even think of that stuff, you know. And they, everybody needs to be paid accordingly because the danger level and the Bureau of Labor Statistics backs us up here. It is the most dangerous job in America now. Shannon has a good point. Nowadays, it's hard to judge the good and bad parts of town. That's a good point. Yeah, Shannon makes a good point there. And you get these... Where, where there's riots. You get these strike, riots popping strikes. up. Mm -hmm. Heck, they were even having riots on the interstate outside of Minnesota there at one point. Yeah. You don't, you don't expect that on I-35. So, yeah. It, but it's it's... Sadly, it's become part of the job. It's part of what we have to deal with as truckers in, in this day and age. I don't, I don't like it, but we need to be compensated for it because it's a fact of life for us now. Can I do the next one? So let's move along from that. Now here's something that all truck drivers become familiar with very quickly and that's the fact that unless you're running i-10 along the bottom and even i-10 you can get a sandstorm but driving in bad weather or encountering bad weather is is a dangerous situation to be in for a truck driver it's a dangerous situation to be in for anybody on the interstate or the highway and half the time the danger isn't just the fact that the road surface is is greased up or snowy or or the visibility is down because of a sandstorm or fog or something the danger half the time lies in the vehicles around you and there's so many so many unskilled drivers on our roads these days and it just takes it takes seem, nothing it seems for these guys to to get you involved in an accident and, and the numbers are against you the the, the traffic volumes are high the four-wheelers aren't paying attention to what they're doing. They're looking on their cell phones or whatever. These mega carriers are releasing truck drivers before they're properly trained. And those guys are a hazard. These mega carriers even have untrained teams on the road with these 80,000 pound missiles. And those guys are running in all different weather conditions and stuff. And we've seen some horrific lawsuits showing that it, Werner was in a couple of them but it doesn't really matter the, the the 
the fact of the matter is, the point is that when you're on, on an interstate or on a highway or any road and the weather is bad, you're in a dangerous situation. It's dangerous on the road at any time, but when the weather turns against you, and it can turn really ugly depending on where you are in the country, but your danger factor doubles and triples in a situation like that. Like coming down down the side of a mountain on an interstate and the road turns to glare ice partway down or something like that, and you've got, you've got 45,000 pounds behind you. Man, that's a dangerous situation to be in. So weather, weather is a danger, a constant danger that, that we as truck drivers face. A anyone run into anything highly unusual driving in bad weather or encountered weird types of weather? Just, all, just about every truck driver has encountered weather and, an, and a dangerous situation that's been triggered by the weather. Flash floods, fog. <laughs> Flash floods. I was coming up from coming up through the desert from Yuma, Arizona, and I was headed back up towards Las Vegas. And that, believe it or not, that is an area that has the occasional flash flood. And I, I, it's just a little two-lane highway that runs through there. And I popped, I was running north, popped over one of the hills, and here the, the whole roadway at the bottom of the next hill was flooded out to the point that, you know, if, if I'd have hit it at highway speed, it would have sent me flying. Uh, I was able to, able to, you know, back right out of it and creep through successfully. But if that had been at two o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't have seen that flash flood, for instance. It would have put me right off the road. James Bratcher says icy road. Yeah, and, and we get that all the time. And look at look at the state of Texas, for instance, that that doesn't feel that they get enough bad weather conditions to even invest in sanders and plows and salting equipment, that type of thing. Now this winter Texas has has really had a bitter lesson that way. But I've been stuck in Texas many, many times for a few days because they just wait for God to clear the ice off the interstate in Texas. And they've they've learned a hard lesson there. But look at the accident toll that Texas has has had through this past winter for storms and, and highway damage and stuff. It's it's horrific. It's horrific. So highways are a dangerous place in bad weather. Uh, Carrie Churchill. Sorry, Carrie Churchill also mentions flash freezing. Yeah, flash, flash freezing. Good, good catch there, Carrie. That can occur to you even coming down the side of a mountain. It can be snowing at the top, and and you get part way down. That snow is melting, running across the road, and then freezing on the road surface. That happened to me in the Rockies. And all of a sudden, the road that was snow covered just turns to ice, just because the elevation level has changed or the fact that the sun can get at some of the snow and melt it and have it run across the road, you can get flash freezing like that occurring. Just And it's just enough. You take your mind off what you're doing, and you're going sideways. A, a few people, I d um, they've gone by, but um, they talk about the uh, heavy winds, how treacherous. Driving. Winds, winds, good, good point. Anyone that's ever run across I-80 in Wyoming with a light van <laughs> knows all about the danger of winds. It's amazing. And we've even seen them in, in Texas. It's amazing that high winds can topple tractor trailers. But they most certainly can. And nobody nobody wants to be in a truck when it tips over. Nobody wants to be in the car beside the truck when it tips over. And nobody wants to tip over into into something worse. Like like down down a ditch or something like that and end up end up upside down in the river. And that happens too. Even even major winds, crosswinds and stuff like that can can create enough of a hazard that you, you're risking your life. Just just by being in the wrong place at the wrong time can be completely innocent, but it's it's an inherent danger of driving a truck in, in some states. You've just got to be aware that that's a possibility and you've gotta you've gotta be prepared for it as best as you can. Kelly Patterson mentions snow can also have a hypnotizing effect when you're driving. Yes, yes, snow can be hypnotizing. And it, it doesn't even have to be at night. It, that can be hypnotizing even through the daytime. And when you're trying to maneuver and the snow is just blowing right at the windshield and you're, you're having trouble seeing, that's a dangerous situation right there. And the problem with that is sometimes it's hard 
even to see enough to be able to find a safe spot to pull off the road because something like that can hit anywhere and you don't know if the shoulder is a safe enough place because it's wide enough or if that's just snow that's filled in to the ditch beside the road and that if you if you pull off onto it thinking there's support there the truck can roll over and i've seen that everybody's seen that happen many times so yeah the snow can be snow can be completely blinding it's brad, going to happen brad Co sorry brad coddington i've had trailer tandems coming off the ground in high winds before yes you you see footage of that on youtube and it's it's incredible to watch and you wouldn't think that a tractor trailer that size could all of a sudden stand up on one side that's scary but it's it's scary as hell to watch like it's never happened to me i just can't imagine how scary the ride is through something like that but it certainly gives you an appreciation of of what the wind can do and so uh, thank you very much for the five dollar donation my friend what do you think of the passes in washington state like i-90 <laughs> that's you know that's that's challenging driving year round in places like washington state and there's it's a lot of companies actually actually do pay more or should pay more just for carriers that run the mountains all the time because there's always an additional issue of of safety there because even even if you're coming down the mountain on a bright summer day and you're pulling a company trailer and if the company trailer hasn't got the brake set up right and if you haven't caught it on your circle check and that that happens and let's not pretend that it doesn't because how many guys crawl underneath their company trailers every day and check the trailer brakes? You you can put yourself in a dangerous situation just by being in the mountains on a sunny day. And then in Washington State, where they get high winds and blinding blizzards and icy roads and stuff like that, I, like I love the Northwest, I love trucking up in there. But you've you've really got to have your mind in the game because it can get it can get way dangerous up there. Justin Bowles or the chest. Justin Basil, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel in Virginia has terrible crosswinds. A driver got blown off the bridge several years ago. I saw I saw the footage of that. Hard hard to hard to watch, just you know, the footage of it. Just an awful thing. And he he died from that, I believe. He drowned actually was the, the, the cause of death finally. But just you know, and I'm sure that guy went to work not not expecting anything like that to happen that day. And you, you hope to God that his job paid enough that it left some, left enough money for his family to keep going. That's just, that's just incredible. That's awful. Jonathan, thank you very much for the ten dollar donation, my friend. Good to see you in the chat this afternoon. Uh, almost went off the mountain because of the ice on the I ninety uh, between Montana and Idaho. Jonathan, thank you for the donation, and 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 yeah, though I, like I love the West, but. They get all sorts of crosswinds and bad road conditions. That's just part of the game out there in the winter. And anybody that trucks out there regularly knows that. But still, it, it doesn't take a whole lot sometimes for you to be focused on something else and all of a sudden the truck's walking sideways on you. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a dangerous part of the job that we do. And drivers need to know that anything can happen in, in a situation like that. It doesn't take a whole lot. And if, if you go into a slide and go off one of those bridges into the river, you're done. And that's that's a dangerous, dangerous deal. Ermin Downey. Ermin Downey comments in the chat. Ermin Downey comments in the chat about ice building up on the wipers. Yes, and, and, and that can happen too. And that's that's a tough deal to deal with, basically. I, I know Mark on Trucking Answers is always harping about heated wipers. I've never had a set, but maybe that should be something that's mandatory because when, you're, when your wipers ice up, you, you just can't let it go on like that. You, you've got to clear them off or get off the road, and sometimes that's you're not, not in a good spot to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So, And it's just it could just come up. The temperature can change. Your defroster doesn't keep up with it, and you've got an issue. And then it's a danger as to how to deal with it, whether you're safe to get out of the truck to clear them off or you can't do the reach around thing because that's, that's, not, that's not safe either, but you've got to deal with the situation. It's, it's a dangerous problem. You've, you've, got to, you've got to think it through always and minimize your odds of getting hurt. Okay, we'll move to the next. 
another another danger and this is this is one of the ones that really irks me because they study the hell out of it and they never do anything about it and everybody's aware that there's a serious lack of safe parking for trucks in the United States and Canada and they all talk about it and they ha they have they had uh, in Jason's law was passed in 2009 because poor Jason Rivenberg couldn't find a safe place to to park for the night and it got him killed and they passed this Jason law and they've done surveys and studies and there's been talk and here we are now and look at Michael Boglin 2014 where the where the shipper refused to let him entrance into the secure yard and here we are in 2021 and I can't say that I've seen any improvement whatsoever in the parking situation across the United States and Canada. Yes, we got a couple more truck stops, and that's about it. And that's been funded by the truck stops. That's not funded by the government or your tax dollars or anything. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen more rest areas. I haven't seen them solve the safe parking issue at all. And I... And they don't want to address it because it costs money. Yet it's a serious, it's a serious problem for us. And some of the some of the rest areas that they have in some of these states aren't even dangerous if you can, or aren't even safe if you can get a spot in them to park. They they don't patrol them. Some of them have security. A lot of them don't. But there's there's a danger right there. Like if you're in an area that you don't know, you're tired, your clock's running out, the weather's turning bad. You need a place to land because you're putting yourself and you're putting others at risk. And sometimes, and I've done it myself, I've gone sometimes for almost 150 miles looking for a safe place to land just because I can't find a place that I feel is safe enough to get off the road and hunker down in a storm. And it's, it's annoying and it's crazy and you're driving tired. And there's the biggest problem with it, you're driving tired just looking for a safe place to park. And, you you know, if, if you're on the eastern seaboard, you can go for a couple hundred miles looking for a safe place to park on the eastern seaboard, and that's dangerous. Just just ask Jason or Michael. I don't, I don't, I don't truck, I don't truck in the eastern seaboard at all anymore. And that's, that's probably one of the biggest reasons is the stress from the traffic, and there's no safe place to stop down there. Comments, you guys, you guys must have. I know you guys have all been in that situation. Matt comments in the chat, and I believe Matt comments in the chat, and I believe Matt is in Toronto. That Canada is even worse for that too. Yeah, you you, you wander into Toronto. There's no truck truck parking in Toronto. In fact, um, Shell well wanted to put a truck stop uh, right off Dixie Road, and. Uh, they wouldn't let them right off the 401 it was and they wouldn't let them do it because they didn't want they didn't want trucks in uh, in their city it's all right to bring the stuff in and out all the goods that they wanted but they didn't want truck drivers staying anywhere near there and it's you know, most major cities have no safe parking you've got to get outside the city to find a safe parking spot and even then you're relying on a truck stop that you know may or may not be safe it's a, it's a it's part of our job. It's part of our job. We need a safe place to land at night or in in bad weather. We need a place to stop so we can eat and get food. And it's it's a challenge anymore to find a safe place. Another inherent danger of the job. Anto, thanks for another $2 there. Uh, what do you think of trucking unions? I'd be I'd be all for a trucking union if they could keep it honest and, and you know the teamsters started out as a great thing and then they then they they lost their way and they became a crooked deal but uh, it's it's sad to think that so many carriers would not take care of their people but in fact in fact that is a problem the mega carriers just 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 abuse their drivers and toss them out and they don't worry about their safety. And I, I think in, in a lot of situations, if you could keep the unis, union honest, it would be a good thing. And I'm not a union guy, but 
I can see now the way things are going in the trucking industry with these these mega carriers. There's almost a need for it again. It's a sad statement, but uh, I think so. And look at the look at the what else has been going on this year and last year alone. This this defunding of the police department by these major cities that certainly lends itself to the level of danger that you're in when you're inside one of these cities delivering. And it takes nothing for, you know, some group of thugs to decide they want your wallet or something like that. And now the police don't come because they're mad because they're defunded or something like that. So dangerous. It's, it's, just, it's just dangerous. So drivers, new drivers especially, need to keep that in mind as well. There's something else that's involved in trucking. And, and, this, and the guys that have been at it for a while recognize this fact and they know it going in generally because most guys do stuff with their eyes wide open but different areas of trucking are more dangerous than than other areas of trucking and sometimes sometimes that type of trucking pays better and sometimes it doesn't but a, a guy hauling a load of diapers in a dry van across Arizona isn't running nearly the same level of risk as a guy up in the bush hauling logs or a guy hauling chemicals because stuff can go wrong at the refineries or with those chemical tanks or even even guys flatbedding for instance for a living that can fall off their trailers or or wipe out tarping and i had a friend that did that he came off a off a 13 foot high load just trying to tarp the load and the wind caught the tarp as he was dragging it back and and blew him right off the off the top of the trailer and he can't walk right to this day. There, different types of trucking are more dangerous than others. And you've got to be aware of those dangers. If you sign up to haul, haul chemicals, for instance, yep, it does generally pay a little better. But this is what can happen. And you've got to decide for yourself if they're paying you enough, if the tanker splits open and you get a bath, was that really all worth it? And, and, and you've got the long-term risks of that, not just the immediate dangers, inhaling that stuff for multiple, many, many years, too. That, that's right. And, and, you're, and you're, a lot of the time you're breathing that stuff, even, even when you're in the refinery or you're loading it. Or I knew a fellow up here one time that was, was involved in an accident. He was hauling caustic acid. He ended up on the side of the road, and the trailer split open, and he was lying in a lying in a pool of this caustic acid from the trailer. And he had he had no control over it. He was he got hit. He didn't he didn't create the accident. He was just involved in the accident. That guy was that guy was lucky to survive that. To this day, he's got scars all on his back from where those chemical burns shaved a, about an inch off his back and about an inch of skin. So there there are dangers just in the type of freight that you're hauling or the type of the type of trucking that you're doing. Sarko 2K08, thank you very much for the $2 donation. What do you think of LTL doubles and triples? There's 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 another bone of contention. Double double and triple trailers snake back and forth. They're hard to control on icy roads. They're hard to control in crosswinds. I know carriers, some carriers like them because they can get more freight on and make more money. But hauling a set of those things can be dangerous too. Now, I, I hauled B trains for about seven, about seven years, I guess it was. And I quite like B trains, but the whole time I was hauling B trains, I was hauling heavy weight. So just, you know, a lot of times you weren't, weren't bothered by the wind or anything like that. And these, these were tanker B trains. But yeah, if, and you see these, these double 53s on the New York Thruway or going across uh, the Trans-Canada and Saskatchewan or something like that. I, th I think that's more dangerous. You've, you've pretty much doubled your odds for, for having trouble with one of those things because you've, with those double 53s, you've increased your overall length to like 120 feet. So you get 120 feet in a blowing crosswind. Imagine what that feels like. So, yeah, that's that's dangerous just in itself. That should that should pay well as well. But you and I have all seen the guys I'm sure running across Western Canada and you think they're at the top of the pay scale? Of course not. 
Rastamar coming in with a fifty dollar donation. Thank you very much for that uh that that healthy donation. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks to you, I went from Swift to running local with a 376 with a 60 series, pulling 120k, and doubles never more than a day and a half from home running paper. Thank you very much for the uh, donation, uh, Rastamar. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. Yes, thank you for that. And it it sounds like you made a wise career choice there. So I'm glad it all worked out. And that's that's part of of what I wanted to talk about because you need to keep your eye on the ball and be making sure that you're being paid accordingly because carriers will take advantage of you if, if if they can. Not all the carriers, but certainly the big mega carriers, like you just mentioned, Swift. So they want their deal is to employ their labor, their drivers, as cheaply as possible. It's a matter of being compensated for the dangers, the risks, and the liabilities. Exactly right. Exactly right. And let's... Let's talk about liability for a second, because there is there is a, a part of the job that's dangerous, and and we did a video on that. Are you prepared to go to jail for your trucking job? Because, and I, I've talked to cops about this, and they'll all admit this. In an accident situation, if they can't figure out what's happened, they blame the truck. That's their mandate from from their force is they'll blame the truck. And all of a sudden, you can be at fault or not and, and end up being found at fault by the police in the court. Now, you did a video on, on the right turn. You could you could do the shortened version of that, and that's when the cop told you that. That's And, and that's right, too. Because you clearly weren't at fault. They knew it, charged you anyway. Yes, and that, that was how I found that out, because I had a woman cut inside me on a right-hand turn. And it was it was clear that I I hadn't caused the accident. She she tried to sneak around. It was a four way stop, and and she passed. She ran the stop sign and tried to cut around on my inside. And I took photographs of everything. And and the cop, you know, I I, I showed the cop the situation. I said, look, you, you can see my blinkers are on in these pictures. You can see that there's no way she should have been in the four way intersection at the same time as me. Like, how did she, what's she doing there? And he said, yep, yeah, well. When in doubt, we're always told to charge the truck driver. And that's, and that's what they did. And I, I went to court over it, and I fought it, and I won, mostly because I had the camera to prove what I had been saying. But as a truck driver, you inherit a certain liability that, that whether it's fair or not, whether, you know, you haven't caught the fact that the, that the wheel nuts are split on the company trailer that you're pulling and the wheels come off, fly across the interstate and hit a guy in a car and kill him. You've just inherited that liability because the first thing the carrier will say was, well, he didn't do a circle check or he would have caught that. And you can't see stretched out bolts in a circle check, but the carrier doesn't want the blame. The carrier doesn't want the liability and they'll always blame the truck driver for that. I had, I had a friend that got caught like that twice by the same carrier, he was, he was a nice old trusting guy. Twice, he pinned onto a company trailer that the brakes were out of adjustment, and he didn't. He was old and half crippled up. He couldn't get underneath the trailers and check their brakes. And it was winter time up here in both instances. Both times, he had to do panic stops, and and the brakes were out of adjustment. He got in accidents, and twice, when they went to court, both times, the first thing that carrier did was point their finger at the driver and said, "Oh, he didn't do his circle check." And I remember just being mad as hell about it. But that was the route they took. Jonathan, thank you very much for another 10 there. Uh, did you guys hear about the accident in California with the truck? And I assume that's supposed to say SUV with 25 people. Wow. Have, I don't know if you've, you've read the latest on that or not. But at the time, I thought they mean bus. They don't mean SUV because you can't get 27 people in an SUV. I was wrong. And what happened was that these guys came out of Mexico, cut a hole in the border fence, tried to run it through with two cars. The second one, the Border Patrol caught the second one. The first one, which was this Ford SUV with the 27 people on it, was barreling along, trying to get away from, from the Border Patrol, ran a stop sign out by El Centro, and got nailed by a truck driver that had the right-of-way that was going through the intersection. 
just just a horrendous accident but quite a story quite you wonder how they could get 27 people in an suv there's what they were doing they were all illegal immigrants trying to sneak into the states and they didn't have a good driver at the wheel and it ended in tragedy several people in the chat are mentioning now the importance of a, of a dash cam in the subject you were just talking about absolutely a dash cam these days is a must-have it is your best friend sometimes it's the only way that you can get yourself out of trouble and it's nice to know that the courts never refute dash cam footage they and neither do the police they just look at it and go yep that's what happened all right because they know you've got no way to alter the the footage or anything like that dash cams absolutely you should have one in your truck you should have one in your car you should have one in your on your helmet when you're riding your motorcycle absolutely the the one of the best investments you'll ever have because at least you're able to prove that you are doing the right thing and that someone else put you in danger. You didn't create the problem. Let's, let's talk about another part of trucking that a lot of guys don't like to talk about. It's one of Kathy's favorite subjects is the fact that as truck drivers, we take a beating health-wise as truck drivers. And, and uh, the uh, center of... Disease prevention has determined now that the average life expectancy of a truck driver is 61 years old. 61 isn't very bloody old, but that's the average length now that they expect a truck driver to live. And, it, and it's a lot of it has to do with the job that we do. We're in situations where we need to eat fast food, we're driving tired half the time because because of the schedule that we're on. It's a sedentary job. You're you're sitting in your chair for 11, 12 hours a day, sometimes 13 or more if you're in Canada. You sit an awful lot. You don't get a chance. When you finally do get done your day, half the time you're too wiped to even go for a walk, let alone get a good physical workout. But all of that stuff catches up to truck drivers and you do this year in year out for 30 40 years all of that weighs on your system and it's it's a problem now that they are beginning to recognize that that it's part of truck driving job it is an inherent danger of truck driving job the average factory worker lives 11 years longer than the average truck driver just because they eat better they go home at night so they sleep in their own beds they get proper rest uh, there's, they're under certainly less stress most of the time than truck drivers because truck drivers, truck drivers suffer from stress whether they recognize it or not. There's, there's stress about being caught in bad storms and there's stress about having to deal with ugly customers and ugly dispatchers and there's stress about being stuffed in traffic and surrounded by idiot four wheelers that that cut them off and hammer on the brakes and stuff like that. There's, there's stress involved in trying to stick your 53 foot trailer into a 40 foot hole and then having the guy talk to you like a fool. There's a lot of stress involved in trucking, whether people recognize it or not. And that wears on your health. O OTR, Ogre, and Corgi, and I've got another comment here that I'd like to comment on. Uh, but Dave, isn't the health situation self-inflicted? If the driver chooses to live off fast food and not take a walk while the truck's being loaded, whose fault is that? Well, I I'm going to comment on that and also David Wright I'm 63 45 years on the road dying a slow death but but here's the deal a, a lot of these companies will push the driver so a driver doesn't have time I mean that's all they have time for they give very little home time for food prep and, and that sort of thing um, so they are being pushed yes it, it is the driver's decision um, but in the defense of drivers I mean they're in a hurry they're under pressure and I, and I can I can appreciate that they're trying hard to do a good job and stay on schedule but meanwhile you know their their health takes takes a kicking and, and that's that's Kathy kind of hit on it there truck drivers try and want to do a good job so if they're going to set something aside it's usually something they need to do for themselves or they should do for themselves because they want to do a good job 
Undercover boss coming in with the 100 bomb. It's the biggest one we've seen yet today. It's the biggest one we've seen in a little while now. Thank you so much for that. We hope you're enjoying the stream and the discussion this afternoon. Have uh, have either one of you watched that show? No. No. It's a good show. You should check that out. Mm. I, the title is obviously self-explanatory, but um, not to get off tangent here, but... Um, Obviously, the boss of big chains go undercover in their own smaller division chains, uh, like Booster Juicer for one, mm -hmm. uh, workout, um, fitness chains, things like that. And they go undercover as um, employees and try and get a scope of what's going wrong in their own um, lower end businesses as to why they might not be performing as well as they think. It's a good show. Cool. Huh. <laughs> just Anyways, thank you for the hundred dollar donations there, undercover. Yes, thank you very away. much. We really appreciate that. Talk about the health thing. Yes, I just caught a a comment from Fred Besmer. It says, "Thanks, Dave, for the info. I'm going to be 61 in July." <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you, Fred. Didn't mean to scare you. And that's that's not my intention with any of this is to scare people. I just want them to be aware. And and another part of this health thing before I get done yelling about that is it is incredible to me, but it is a fact, apparently, that all sorts of truck drivers that are on the road for long periods of time and away from home suffer from depression. And that that can be an awful thing. And sometimes it's the guys you would you would least suspect of having an issue like that. But it takes its toll on some truck drivers and that's part of that job. And I guess it's more prevalent than, than I had realized or a lot of guys had realized, but that's that started to rear its ugly head in the last few years is how many truck drivers are suffering from depression. I'm, I'm sad to announce that. Finally, talking about health and truck driving, we haven't even touched on the fact that this year or last year, all of us or most of us drove through this COVID-19 pandemic. And certainly, that wasn't good for anybody's health, yet we were all expected to do it. And nobody knew, you know, when they got to the receiver, what to expect, whether they were going to let you in or whether they had COVID and not, not said anything. You didn't know what to expect. The, the truck stops were, were closed and there was no clean food or showers available. And tr yeah, the, yeah, if you were a company guy, you were getting into a truck that, might have been sanitized and might not have been sanitized or all sorts of health risks this year for truck drivers operating through this COVID-19. And that was kind of a flash in the pan. A couple of guys, a couple of guys announced on the media that thank you, thank you uh, and recognize trucking for fighting through the COVID-19. Virtually nobody saw any money for it. And there wasn't nearly enough recognition, in my opinion, for the health risks that all these truck drivers took just to keep the economy rolling. And that 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 mad because truck drivers did a hell of a thing and stepped up and there was very little recognition. JJ, thank you very much for the five dollar donation. Uh, I've not heard of this before, but I'll have to check this out. The Minister of Wellness on YouTube. Uh, he teaches uh, health nutrition. He can be a spectacular help for trucking. He has helped people lose a hundred pounds in a hundred days. God, that's a uh, quite the rate i didn't even know mm. such a thing was possible Good actually guy. so it, it, like to lose that much weight in that amount of days that's quite a that's quite a feat so it is uh, yeah i i'd want to make sure there was a um a certified doctor involved in that formula but yeah that's well I, being a minister of wellness i would imagine so yeah. yes to see a self-appointed minister though is what i'm asking but th thank you thank you for the donation but yeah, and we've and you know we've we've all seen some pretty obese guys in the truck stops, and some some people by nature are just heavier built, but it's a danger and it's a reminder to try to try to work on our health and stay healthy. Uh, just before we leave that, uh, just looking back for Kelly Patterson. Kelly Patterson, I started making videos addressing health, nutrition, and cooking while in a truck. And that interests me a great deal, Kelly, because that's something I've been thinking about doing if there was an interest 
from our YouTube community is is doing more lifestyle type content for drivers if it was of interest. Um, but that's interesting, Kelly. I'd like to know more about that. Oh, yes. And also, Kelly also mentions truck drivers also have a very high rate of divorce. That's something we didn't have on our list. Oh, that's, and that's, that's a that's, huge thing. That's a huge thing. They have a huge rate of divorce. Certainly, that adds to your stress level going through a divorce. I've known, I've known guys that have been married three and four times. So, yeah, that's, that's as far as your stress level is concerned and your depression level, <laughs> that's a huge factor. And we hadn't even thought of that. But, yeah. Something else, something else. San, SoCal Salmon says, I think all drivers should get out there during this pandemic. I feel guilty sitting at home all this time, uh, but because you haven't been cleared for duty. Man, you can't, you can't help that, SoCal Salmon. You're, you've had an operation. There's sometimes when it's, you're safer and smarter to sit at home, so. We know you. We know you've been doing your part, but heal up. Finally, another another issue, and who would have ever thought this would pose to be a danger to the truck driving community? Because it was not intended this way. But tired drivers, we we now know that being tired on the road, one out of every four drivers on the road today is tired. Is, is suffering from a lack of sleep. So they bring in the ELD to control the amount of hours that the, that the carriers can work their truck drivers. And I thought, that's a great thing. I, I, really, I really did. I, I thought, that's, that's the ticket. It's going to make sure that guys get proper rest and, and eat properly. And I, I, I was all for it. But... I was I was viewing it as a tool meant to help truck drivers. And that was how the government, the FMCSA, actually introduced it. That was the idea behind it. But a lot of the carriers looked at it and, and initially thought, oh, this is a bad thing, and then decided to use it to their advantage, and they turned it into an efficiency tool so they could maximize the time that their trucks were running. So yes, they couldn't push their drivers to run two and three log books, but they could say, okay, your 10 hours is up, 10 o'clock in the morning, take your time off. And you and they have drivers then getting up just at the point where their circadian rhythm is telling them that their bodies need to sleep. So they're getting up tired at one or two or three in the morning and being sent back to work by these carriers because the carrier has put them to bed early because of the hours of service. So then the carrier says, well, no, no, you're not sleeping all night like you should or you need to. You're going to get up as soon as those 10 hours are up. And they've turned it into an efficiency tool. And it's forcing drivers on the road. And it's it's sad because you cannot, in reality, force a driver on the, onto the road. But so many of these new drivers and these young drivers and guys working for these mega carriers are so afraid of losing their job that when the when the ELD rings at 2 o'clock in the morning and it's snowing like a bastard out and you can't see across the parking lot, the carriers are forcing those new drivers back out on the road because, and the, and the drivers are going because they're afraid of losing their jobs. And I think I think that's a tragedy. And I can hardly believe that, that carriers would use the ELD in this manner, yet I hear every week from guys that this is happening to and it's just it's just wrong so as much as the eld was intended to help drivers get more sleep and drivers that aren't afraid of losing their jobs are getting more sleep but all the new guys that are afraid of losing their jobs and guys working for these mega carriers are being intimidated on being forced out back on the road before they're ready and that's that's hugely dangerous, especially especially to the new driving population, which is a majority of them these days. Rastamar, thank you very much for the five dollar donation. There, sorry we had to wait a little bit to get to this. Uh, any tips on how to gain weight? Should be a should be an expert in the field here, and uh, <laughs> and how to stay in shape while on the road. Well, maybe not so much that part of the question, mm -hmm. but the first part 
You, you should have you down. It's it's pretty easy to gain weight, and uh, if you want to gain weight, just eat pizza. That's 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 the whole secret to it. Right now there. I'm okay. I'm going I'm going to assume that he means an appropriate weight to your height, so not just gaining weight for the sake of it. So if you know anything about that, I think that's how he probably wants his question answered. Ah, uh, well then then Kathy would be the one to talk to there. I can I can tell you how to pack on the pounds, <laughs> but maybe that's not exactly what you're looking for. Sport guy 17 coming in with a five dollar donation. Thank you very much for that, my friend. Love the show and currently getting my CDL in Florida. I'm trying to be my own owner operator soon. I'll be uh, looking forward to uh, for or I'll be looking for a truck rather to start my own journey. Thank you very much for the five dollar donation, sport guy. Well, well, th thank you, and 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 good luck with your journey. You're you're uh, you're into an interesting. Uh, Interesting line of work, I can tell you that. I'm, I'm not sure we answered the last uh, about gaining weight and staying in shape while on the road. Well, I turned that over to you. Staying in shape? I can talk about staying in shape. Not that I necessarily practiced it as often as I could. So but take that with a grain of salt if you want. One, <laughs> one, one of the things that I did. Didn't you just uh, knock on the Minister of Health earlier for being official? And now you're going to go ahead and give and advice? I'm not sure there's any such thing as a Minister of Wellness. Oh, but you're you going to go know, ahead and give someone health know. advice here? I don't know. It you just ever heard a little of the hypocritical. Of Wellness before? Have you heard of the definition of uh, hip, uh, hypocrisy? <laughs> I'm trying to answer this guy's question. I used to always, and I did it for a couple reasons, but when I landed at night, I would park at the very farthest point away from the truck stop and, and utilize the walk. And Joplin, the, the Petro and Joplin was great for that because you could park damn near a half a mile from the truck stop. And I'd always use that, use that walk to look around and look at the trucks as I headed to the truck stop. I'd, I'd never take the straight pinball route, but it was these huge truck stops are great places to go for walks. Little America, I did that all, Walcott, I did that religiously. So there is there is one good way of getting exercise. Sadly, a lot of these truck stops aren't in places where you can go for walks outside the truck stop proper, but some of them are. And I see a lot of the truck stops now, uh, particularly the Petros, are getting things like basketball courts and little gymnasiums where you can get a quick workout or something like that. But some of the guys that I've seen in the best shape are guys that just get out of their truck in the morning and start doing push-ups and sit-ups. And it's just part of their regular routine. I had wished that I had had the discipline to do that, and I didn't. But certainly those guys, the guys that get up every morning and do a 20-minute workout before they do anything else, are the smartest guys around because those are the guys that are taking care of themselves. At the end of what we've been talking about here, I, I think. You haven't put everything in. I'm still driving some tea. Yes. Yeah. I should. I should. I should tack a little more on on that before we wrap up. There are there are drivers on the road. That are truck drivers, that are simply unsafe because they've been poorly trained there are truck drivers on the road that suffer from road rage because they're dealing with idiot carriers and and there are truck drivers on the road and there are teams on the road and Fred this isn't directed at you you know the teams I'm talking about there are teams on the road where God one, one guy doesn't even have a license, and the other guy's got three months' experience. And you, you see this in these mega carriers in the States, like, like Swift and that. And it, it boggles my mind that they can turn a team loose with one guy that doesn't have a license and one guy that barely has a license. And now, according to some of the waivers, and I'll talk about this Friday in the video, but now you don't even need to have a license to be alone in the truck to pilot the thing. And it's, it's, it's crazy to me, but you are on the road with guys like this now, and you're on the road with guys like this in all types of weather. And as the FMCSA strives to help these huge carriers fight the driver shortage, they're allowing them to put any clown, untrained or not, behind the wheel and, and pilot these trucks. 
and it's crazy. And you're on the road with these guys, and that is, a, and and you're, God, you're in the truck stops with these guys. You're at the warehouses with these guys. All these untrained guys, or poorly trained guys, and this is a huge hazard for us because you can't pick them out by looking at them. You only you only spot them when they're coming across the intersection at you, or, or through the median strip at you, and stuff like this. And that that is a huge problem for the safety level of truck drivers today. And it's a perfect example of the carriers not caring about safety. They're just strictly looking at revenue and they're willing to put anybody with a pulse behind the wheel and they're doing it and they're doing it. And you're on the road with these people. And that, that is a danger you shouldn't have to be facing. That is a danger that nobody should have to be have to be facing but as truck drivers you're part of that mix on the interstate with these untrained people and and they're allowing it now and that is that is a huge risk to truck drivers especially guys in bad weather or something like that you see these huge multi-truck pileups in bad weather in wyoming and texas and and these states now and you never used to see that before you never used to see anything like that. But it's because all these guys get into bad weather and they try to accelerate through the blinding snowstorm or they see something coming and they freeze and they panic and they just take their hands off the wheel and take their feet off the pedals. They don't know how to handle it. They don't know what to do. They just play pinball and everybody slides into each other. Look at the guy that came down into Denver, came into Denver last year and got his trailer brake smoking, drove right past the runway ramp and, it, and into, uh, into traffic to try to stop the truck. He used traffic to try to stop the truck. These are the kind of guys you're on the highway with now. And that's just dangerous as hell. And it's just part of the danger of being a truck driver these days. You're on the interstate with people at the wheel of vehicles that shouldn't even be there. And they are a risk to your health and your safety. Joe Jones coming in with a $5 donation. Living healthy and trucking don't go well together. Heard Harold and Nets from TMC passed away. Stay safe out there. Thank you very much, Joe Jones. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But th thank you for the donation, but sorry to hear about that. that. That is a good point, though. The two do not go well together, not not easily. I, I, I believe it's something that you really need to be mindful of and, and work at staying in good health when you're driving for yes. a living. Yes, but it, it's bad enough. So I guess I get incensed when I, when I hear that, that trucking is an unskilled job because anyone that's ever done it knows that it is anything but unskilled. And you get these mega carriers on their huge recruiting blitzes. And their goal is to get as many guys for as cheap as possible because they need to pay their shareholders half the time because most of them are publicly traded. So they pay their people as little as possible. And to get them into these positions in the first place, they're not honest with these new guys about just exactly what it is they're getting into. So these guys are coming into truck driving jobs and working for less than $40,000 a year after taxes and 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 they're just happy to have a job but it doesn't nearly pay enough and then when you become skilled at, at your job after 10 or 20 years that should pay a whole lot better but Guys All right, take a take, take take a breath there, Rango. Okay, uh, Rastamar coming in with a hundred dollar donation. You wow. guys are crushing it this afternoon. I can't believe it. Stay safe out there, he says. Uh, I gotta go load fertilizer in uh, Pocatello. Was that Pocatello? Pocatello. Yeah, Pocatello. thank you. Uh, ID headed for Pincher Creek, Alberta. This oh. is going to be fun. Thank you so much for the more than generous donation, Rastamar. I hope you're uh, hope you're safe on the road on your trip over. Yes, thank you for the donation. Thank you very much. And you're, you're on, you're in for a pretty cruise. I imagine you've done that before. But, but uh, from Pocatello up into Pincher Creek, I, I, I've done that trip, and that's that's a pretty drive. That's a pretty drive. For, so you're in for some nice scenery. My, you know, it's it's the kind of road and the kind of weather up there that you'll earn your pay. 
And I think that I was just what well, what I was going on about. But truck driving, truck driving, good truck driving, professional truck driving requires skill, serious skill. It is not unskilled labor. I get mad when people suggest that it is. And it's it's the mega carriers that help promote that image. That is an image that has become popular in the last 10 or 15 years. It's not right. It is not right. It's a highly skilled job. And people that take it seriously know that. And they work every day to keep themselves safe, safe and, and the others in the cars around them safe as well. And that needs to pay accordingly. So I, I, I guess what I, what I want to say too is that that's why you don't want to work your whole life away for a mega carrier that underpays you. That's why you've got to get with these good carriers that appreciate your skill set, appreciate your level of dedication. They pay you well. They have a benefit package. Perhaps they've got a, a retirement package as well, and they pay you for all your time because you're out there, you're out there 70 hours a week plus, and and sometimes layovers as well and resets and stuff. You want a carrier to be paying you for all your time because you're worth it, because you're a skilled professional. And I will not accept the fact that skilled professionals are untrained or unskilled labor, because it's just not the case. Not any, not any fool can bring a set of B trains off the side of a mountain in a, in a winter storm and, and do it well. That takes skill. All right, take a, take a breath there, skills. Uh, Desky coming in with a $5. I got to back three times in training. I had to learn while working. You know, it's not very much experience at all. But I'm just sorry to hear that. Tyrone Campbell coming in with a $5 donation as well. Thank you very much for that. And uh, Gurusman, I hope I'm saying that right, with a $5 donation as well, the triple five. Uh, the other day I pulled into a truck stop for my 30, and the truck in front of me couldn't back into the spot. Just took my 30 waiting for him. What an unfortunate way to, to spend one of your uh, few breaks that you do get throughout the day. I did see a funny comment from Grilled Moral as well. Where was that? Holy cats, Dave is having steak tonight and smoked trout from Henry's. Well, that's what, that's what we were discussing earlier about putting on weight. So Bringing it in by snow that's how he intends on doing that. Yeah, just lots of raw meat. Uh, or not raw meat. Uh, Red meat, that's the word I'm looking meat. for. There we go. Uh, he could eat raw meat too, but he might be puking it back out afterwards. So. Which oh, would man. be a way to stay in shape, technically. I hear that's what the celebrities do. So they eat something, <laughs> then throw it back up afterwards. So. <laughs> yeah. Might be a strategy for you to try. Is it called bulimia? I don't know what it's called. It's probably called stupid. But anyways, <laughs> thank you for the uh, donations, fellas. So so one, one thing I, I want to add, and you said that's the mentality that the mega carriers promote, the fact that it's a low-skilled job and anybody could do it. But I do hear... Of, of some drivers who actually believe that too. And, and, and I believe that's an element of brainwashing. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Well, it could well be an element of brainwashing, but it, it, it also to me would indicate someone that wasn't particularly skilled at their job and someone didn't, that didn't really care about how well they did their job. And there, there are guys that out there that just don't care and they run into stuff and do a bad job and generally are only in the industry a couple of years because it's a filler position for them and they're not interested in doing it well or being professional about it. But there are, there are drivers and there are drivers and the skilled professional truck drivers that the industry requires, the economy requires, are anything but unskilled labor. They are professionals, and they need to be recognized as such. So, so when a carrier is saying, "Well, we, we we don't pay for that kind of waiting time," so twice in a week, you know, you're loading two or three times a week, you're doing LTL, you're waiting a couple hours at the loading dock, and not being paid a red nickel. If you're working for a company like that, what would you do? It it boggles my mind that the average truck driver, statistically now, donates twenty hours a week every week free time while he sits at loading docks and stuff like that i wouldn't work for a carrier like that there's always a better carriage there's lots of good carriers out there, all sorts of them you just need to take that time that 20 hours of yours that they're wasting and seek out better carriers because they are out there don't be don't be giving your life away or a 30 or work week away to these carriers for free just don't, just don't do it just don't do it. There are better jobs out there. You're a professional. You need to be paid for your time. 
simple as that. Don't let people, carriers, take advantage of you. And they'll do it all day long if you let them. Just don't let them. You're worth more than that. Gary, coming in with a $5 donation. I'm going to call you Gary because that's an, uh, an absurdly long name, and I already know that I'm going to stumble over it. Anyways, thank you for the uh, for the $5 donation. Hope you're enjoying the stream this afternoon. Um, just something I'd like to add. Someone in the chat. Uh, here we go. Uh, Disky Valley. That's a lie, and you have a. Uh, he was commenting, I think, to someone else. You have a lot of responsibility driving that truck, and, th and there's something we haven't touched on too: the the tremendous weight on your shoulders as a truck driver for your your own safety, of course, and the others around you. That's that's a huge, huge thing. The truer truer words were never spoken. The the amount of responsibility as a truck driver that you shoulder every day when you get into the seat of that thing every time every time is, is almost beyond imagination if you think about it if you think about the fact that you're piloting this 80,000 pound vehicle or more depending on where you are through all kinds of weather surrounded by all kinds of traffic and people that don't drive particularly well and people that are on their cell phones and aren't even paying attention to their driving and they, they weave in and out and cut you off. It is your responsibility to keep yourself and those other people and the rig safe. And it's a huge responsibility. And professional drivers know that this is part of their deal. This is part of what they've signed up for. And that's why you've got to be working for a carrier that recognizes the kind of responsibility that mm -hmm. you're shouldering and they don't want their equipment all banged up and they don't want to be in lawsuits because you've mowed over some four-wheeler it's huge the responsibility level is huge it's intimidating but it is part of the trucking job and you've you've got to understand that i, I think it's quite easy to put it into perspective if you were to think about it um in comparison to driving uh, like a cargo ship, for example, or if you're flying a plane, you bear the exact same amount of responsibility and risk at the same time while driving one of those two vehicles equal to so as driving a truck down the highway. And if everybody took it that seriously, I don't think there'd be half the problems. Well, the, well I'm, uh, that was more or less a question for you, Dave. Do you, do you agree? Yeah. Do you disagree? Uh, I do agree. And it's, it's, it's probably a whole lot easier for an airline pilot to recognize his level of responsibility because if something goes wrong he just drops out of the sky with a couple hundred people and kills everybody but driving an 80,000 pound missile down the interstate has, has it's the equivalent near. it's the equivalent in terms of risk just because yes. you're not 20,000 feet up in the air doesn't mean you still can't kill people oh that's right like 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 look at this poor guy in El Centro that that just wiped out 27 people killed 12 of them I guess that's, and it wasn't even his fault. And that guy will suffer from that memory for the rest of his life. And it's not fair. And it'll add to his stress. But that's part of, part of the job, whether you like it or not. Joe Jones coming in with a two dollar donation actually makes a very solid point. They say unskilled to keep the wages down. That's a, that's Absolutely. exactly why they say it, Joe. And they don't want you to think. Yeah. The mega carriers don't want you to think that you've got a skill set. But you're in there developing your skill set. And that's why you need to leave these mega carriers behind. Because they will always pay you the absolute lowest that they can. And they're aware of the situation. And they don't want to talk about the dangers of the job. They don't want you thinking about it. They just want you to move the loads for as little financially as you possibly will do it for. Sorry, I realized I had my mic muted for that. But uh, Joe Jones, just in case you didn't hear me there, thank you very much for the $2 donation. And just for anyone else who didn't catch the comment, they say unskilled to keep the wages down. Yeah, that's yep. that's exactly right. That, that's so. exactly why they do it. And and the, the less they pay their drivers, the more they pocket themselves and, and pass it to the shareholders. As they say, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, don't drink the, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, don't, don't buy into that mentality. They're counting on that, though. They are counting on the fact that drivers think that that's all they're worth, but it's simply not true. It's 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 part of something that's that's suffered in the last twenty years. The the subculture of trucking has changed, and and you don't get especially through this COVID thing. 
you don't get young drivers and old drivers sitting around the truck stop chewing the fat and, and catching up with each other. And a lot of the times now, because there isn't that intermingling, there isn't that contact, young drivers don't really understand or recognize exactly what their job entails and, and what a responsibility that it is and, and what an honor it is to be a, a true professional. And, and they just kind of take the job for granted and they stick with these mega carriers for years because it's it's easy they get to know the system and they get to know yeah i can get away with this and i can get away with that and skilled professional drivers understand that they have a particular skill set that particular skill set is getting harder and harder and harder to find these days and good carriers recognize that there are still guys out there with this skill set young or old guys that care and girls that care to do a top-notch job top-notch job and those are the people that will make the best money in this industry and they're they're worth it all day long and and probably more and those are the types of drivers you want you want to be a pretty interesting comment here uh kelly patterson says for me truck driving has taught me to be more patient and hyper aware of my surroundings now that must be a really subjective thing considering we have a truck driver here in front of us and neither of those two words would be ones that I would use to describe him. I would use maybe a number of different words, maybe <laughs> like... Um, I am very patient when I'm driving. I don't suffer fools. Well. We have yet to see that side of him. I will admit that. You've been in, in cars and trucks with me for years. You know I'm patient on the road. And sometimes it does take us several years to reach our destination. So, <laughs> I, But I do not suffer fools well and i do get impatient with with fools but back to who was that kelly patterson that said that it's 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 part of your skill set as a professional driver it does it does teach you patience because other than that you'll snap and go out of your tree and suffer from road rage and stuff like that you you've got to be patient you've got to be patient but it's 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 good that you've recognized that that's been a part of what you've what you've absorbed in your trucking career good point by the way i hadn't i hadn't thought of that but that's true it helps you develop patience and there's nothing wrong with that we could all use some more he of that also mentions hyper awareness of the surroundings another that thing, is a huge thing that's a cup kelly you're really just hitting it here yeah, he's, Hy hyper awareness exactly because you're the professionals are always aware of what's around them and they're watching, it's kind of like the Smith system teaching. You're always aware of what potentially can do you damage or, or cause you danger or something like that. So you're always aware, or the good guys are always aware, of exactly what's going around around on them at, at all times. And, you know, they, they subconsciously look for escape routes or maneuvers they can do to get themselves out of trouble if they need to, or, or potentially that this guy's going to run the red light or something like that. They're always aware of their surroundings. That's exactly right. Good way to put it. I just want to pick out this comment in particular for you to respond to. Um, if anyone can get off the plane and train them in under a month to do this job, it's not exactly what he, this person that stated this comment would consider a high-skilled job. So if you want to respond to that comment... That it's not the type of job that someone... I'll, re I'll, repeat, I'll Please. repeat the phrase. Yeah, I don't so, want to miss any of it. Um, it was... It, uh, sorry, I just have to find it here again. But I believe it was, if you could just get anybody off the plane and train them in under a month, it's not exactly what this person would consider a skilled profession. So if you want to answer that in clear, concise detail to make it clear. I know you, you basically already answered that question, but if you could summarize I, I it. I think I get what you're they saying. They can get a CDL. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Because that's, it's easy to get one. That's that's the whole problem with the system, and that's... But it doesn't the make them a truck driver. Huge problem with the mega carriers is they can, they can get the CDL, but that doesn't mean they can drive the truck. And, and we're going to get into that this Friday. And we're going to get on into Friday's that video. video Friday. But... The big carriers aren't, aren't training guys. They're just just dumping them in trucks and getting them CDLs and sometimes not even getting them CDLs. I'm, ju I'm just going to acknowledge this donation here, and then we'll come back to the question because I think it was a little bit misinterpreted by you there. Um, Macmillan, thank you for the $10 donation. Looking forward to starting trucking in July. 
will be retiring from civil service after 20 years. Wow, that's that's incredible. Uh, I appreciate your channel, and I'm an avid fan of yours. Never uh, relegated. Relegated. Never seen that word before. Uh, trucking to be unskilled. Thanks very much, and thank you very much for the uh, donation, Macmillan. We uh, appreciate that you enjoyed the channel. Uh, anyways, to come back to it. Uh, so I, I think he's really what he said was arguing against your core point that this profession can be strongly argued as unskilled so I was more or less looking and I think he is to looking for a direct counter argument as to why you would say it is skilled labor that's what he just talked about yeah for an hour let me yeah let me well that's so that yeah condense it down because uh, yeah, so give it a very show. brief answer let me first say to to Macmillan there thank you for the donation and I appreciate the fact that you've never relegated trucking as as being unskilled and and we in the industry appreciate that and we're, we wish more people saw it that way so so thank you so back back to the other question now I thought it doesn't matter what I think I'll reiterate it just give her I don't think you can take anybody off a plane give them months training and make a truck driver out of them. So they, some people might be convinced that they've become a truck driver after a month's lackadaisical training. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them that believes you can sit some new guy in a classroom for a couple weeks, let him drive a truck a couple hours, and he's a truck driver. That, not in my book, she's not. And Lee Harvey says those one month drivers are easy to spot. Yeah, you can spot them <laughs> a mile away and they're a danger. Yeah. And a threat to everyone. Yeah, else. yeah. They're they're usually the guys rolled over in the median strippers. So uh, now that I've taken a moment to think about it here, so it's hard to see things when they're closest to you, and maybe this is a lens that you haven't thought of it before. But how does someone who isn't a truck driver and has no never had experience with trucking before distinguish between uh, a one month driver off the plane, as he describes it? and then a professional driver uh, such as yourself as someone from the outside looking in how do you explain to someone like okay you're both truck drivers but one skilled and one you What's would argue is unskilled like would you mm -hmm. distinguish a first month driver as unskilled technically still at that point like what is the distinguishing factor you would make between you and someone who is of a month's training and how would you present that to someone who has never had any experience in the field well that's 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 quite a question first of all experience is everything in this industry so one month means nothing three months means nothing a year means nothing you're a babe in the woods you're just you're just not even scratching the surface experience is everything and I I have to laugh and there are going to be some guys out there that are offended, and I don't care. But they, they, you know, they get in seven years' experience, and they think they've got it all figured out. And those are the guys half the time, too, that screw up because they get overconfident, and they go down the mountain too fast one time or something like that. It takes years to master these things and do it professionally. And it doesn't take weeks, and it doesn't take classroom time or something stupid like that. It's experience, experience, experience. And you can take a guy that's been doing reefer work, like me, for 40 years, and then put him in something like oversized that I've never done before, and I have zero experience. So my value as an oversized driver is pretty much zero. It takes experience to learn what you're doing. Yeah, with the oversized, I know enough to be careful, and I know enough to swing wide, and other than that, I know nothing. It's experience. And everything is different, so the more time you get behind the wheel doing whatever particular type of trucking that you're going to do is, is what counts, is what counts. But you, you just can't take anybody and dump them in a truck of any type for a month and consider them a real truck driver. Jonathan, thank you very much for another $10 donation. He gives a, an example in which you um, have someone who's been in a three-week training course, uh, to be considered a marksman, but does that make you a professional shooter? Um, sure. may, maybe I maybe I should rephrase the question. It, it's not an argument of experience guarantees quality of work, however you want to phrase that. But it, th my question was, and I think the other person's question was, 
maybe at its core was how do you present that to someone who has never had any experience in the industry like because they wouldn't know you from the other truck driver yeah, so you how both, you both are the how do you them. argue to someone that I'm skilled but this person isn't and that's and that's a huge part of the trucking industry today because you get a guy in a four-wheeler that can't tell tell one truck driver from another and he has no way of knowing half the time it used to be it used to be and it was a good assumption that when you were in a car if you came across a truck driver there was a professional at the wheel and that was pretty much taken for granted and that was the case and these days that is not the case at all however all sorts of people have not made that jump have not made that transition because they don't realize what's happened in the trucking industry and, and honestly there is no way to tell anymore and I, I have a huge problem with that sometimes you can get hints by looking at the equipment they're driving you can if you know trucks you know a, you know a, a piece of crap truck from from a, a good truck and that's that's certainly one indication on how the driver keeps his equipment but it's it's a huge problem anymore and and you just can't assume that you're safe on the interstate beside a truck anymore and that it's, it's, it's a sad statement of affairs, but that, that is the case. And, and a mindset, the, 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 a safe mindset is important, too. You've got to have your head in the game, but you have to be feeling it. It's just not the license that makes you a, a good driver. Yeah, it, as a professional driver, you've always got to have your head in the game. And always getting better. And, and wanting and to get better. Constantly improving. And that's, you know, that's that's part of what a professional wants to do is just keep honing his skills and getting better and better and better. But if a four-wheeler goes by and sees a guy with his feet up on the dash watching a movie on his on his little screen or, or talking on the, on the cell phone, that's not a professional driver. So there's, I guess there's one way to tell. I guess there's one way to tell. But, but that also depends on how seriously someone takes their job, to be fair. But from what I've learned from listening to you two, that someone who signs up for being a truck driver shouldn't be signing up to be a truck driver. It's not like signing up to be like a sous chef at a local restaurant or something like that. You yeah. you, you go there because you want want the money. Truck driving shouldn't be a, uh, a job that you pick up just because you want the money. It should be a job that you plan on investing 110% of yourself into so that you can become a professional truck driver in time you shouldn't be getting hired on board with just the intent of just kind of cruising your way through it and whatever you end up doing is what it is because it's a serious job it, 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 yeah it, there shouldn't be people in the industry that are just doing it for the money because a yeah. lot of people don't take their job seriously and trucking isn't one where you can have people you can't afford, uh, you to. Can't afford to have people mm -hmm. who don't take their job seriously mm -hmm. is is really the moral of that well that that should be the intent but but yeah I, but how many people do you think for the truck drivers just mm -hmm. do it just because too many sadly sadly that's a growing number because we don't have the uh, um, the manufacturing that we used to have all of that's gone overseas and it's left hundreds of thousands of people out of work and people have to put food on the tables and there are always truck driving jobs available and so we, we see people in the industry now that don't don't understand even what they're getting into and don't even particularly care they just need the paycheck and that that has become another danger within our industry and these people aren't doing it to pose a danger to themselves and others of course they're not but there is so much involved with trucking that they don't recognize the dangers involved and how quickly an accident can come upon them if they're not paying attention. And that's that's a danger to everybody as well. And that's a danger to other drivers, other four-wheelers, and to themselves. Every, it's a danger to everybody. Unintentional, but it's still a danger. Matt, thank you very much for the $5 donation. Truckers are not only drivers, they are professional drivers. Not everyone can drive a killing machine on the road the way you, we do. And that was kind of the point that I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. about being, you know, the equivalent to um, an airplane driver or 
a ship driver or anything like that of any any vehicle has the potential to take a life so no matter what the vehicle is i think they all deserve to be treated with the same level of respect as a professional in that field so cal sandman has a has a good point on hindsight you will continue learning even after 20 years as well and and there's another sign of a professional you're never finished learning you're getting better and acquiring knowledge and and acquiring more skills and getting better at your skills every day shannon i just caught what you were saying there and i found i found otr ogre's comment and if that's if that's the attitude and you believe that i'm worried about you otr ogre it's it's I, I, I don't I don't know quite how to respond we'll say it. Um, yes, you do. a lot of people buy into the propaganda that this is some high-skilled industry it is that's not propaganda and the first time you come down an icy mountain road and the trailer walks out sideways on you that, then you'll understand that, that was the same comment that I asked you earlier just yeah. so you know, okay that was the same one okay um, this is a skilled industry just some well, yeah, people. that's why I had you address it I earlier. Get it now. Um, I get it. Ghost Cat actually made a kind of an interesting point that I want to know your thoughts on. Uh, I'm surprised cars aren't taken more seriously. They're just as dangerous. And I agree with that. But mm. do you think it's because just th the threshold to be behind one of those is just so low? Like, it just everyone can do it. So there's really no way to. It's kind of like the point that I brought up earlier. To be a truck driver, you want to be taking what you're doing very seriously. Driving a car is about as casual for people now as eating, drinking, and whatever. So I, people don't take it very seriously. So they don't take the necessary precautions that go along with driving a car, such as you know not being on your phone or just basic safety things that you should be abiding by while on the road. So... Um, do you, do you think that's why they aren't being taken as seriously? or? First off, let me say, Shannon, thank you for putting me on to that. And, and let me say then, now, back to, back to the business about the four-wheelers, there's, there's, there's a completely low threshold on being able to operate a four-wheeler anymore. And I, th I, think it's, I think it's insane. I think half the people out there in cars shouldn't even have a license. And I think the majority of them have no concept of how dangerous a car is at 60 miles an hour, what a weapon that is. And I don't think it ever crosses their mind. And I think if I were to redo the whole system over again, I'd make it very tough for people even to get a license for an automobile because it's a thing these days people take for granted. And they think it's their right. They think it's, yeah, they think it's, they're right. They don't. They don't recognize it as a privilege. They think it's their right to have a license, and I. Th I think that whole attitude there has been is, has partially been developed by the ministry that controls it, and I don't agree with it. And I think. I think. I think four wheelers. They pull us into scales all the time to have a look at us. I think they should be pulling the four wheelers into the scales and having a good hard look at them a whole lot more than they do, and they never do it. But there's where the problem is. 94% of the traffic accidents are caused by four-wheelers. Why aren't they investigating the hell out of them? Yeah, they're looking at us. But like I say, they like to blame the truck driver. We're not really the problem. All we can do is, is be the best, the best defenseman we can at trying to alleviate the number of uh, as many problems as we can to make up for all the bad drivers out there. All right, so this is this is a really good comment. I think this will be kind of our um, stepping off point for today because the answer to this question should be a good summary um, as to a lot of the things that we talked here about today. So um, Captain Hindsight wants to know, what's the cause for low expectations for getting into the trucking industry? <laughs> That's a good question. And, and again, I want to blame the mega carriers because they try to play down the role because they're trying to play down the pay scale, basically. And I, I, blame, I blame them. I blame them on the fact that they, they paint it as an easy solution to being unemployed. They paint it 
as a job that anybody and everybody can do. And, and like I say, it's because it's their goal is to recruit no matter what, no matter what, and pay them poorly. And, and I, again, I'll lay that at the feet of the mega carriers because they don't translate to the people that they're hiring what an important and dangerous job this is. They mislead them. They mislead them. And, and I couldn't disagree with anything more. I, you know, it's just the, it's the wrong attitude they've developed for their people because they don't want to pay them. And, and that's where half the problem lies, or better than half. All right, chat, that will about do it for us today. We'll take a few moments to answer a few more questions, comments, things like that, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Hope you enjoyed this longer style of live stream. If you did, then uh, be sure to let us know um, in the comments here as we start to wrap things up. Lucas Farber, thank you very much for the $10 donation, by the way. Hey, Dave, question, what is your max weight that you would spec a truck to be able to find 80K legal roads in case you needed to take your truck to another market, for example, milk to reefer? You know, that's that's a good question. And that, of course, varies Canada to the U.S., and that's why the American guys have it so much easier. But that's that's what I always did. I never intended when I started buying trucks for myself. I, I would spec them so that they could pull 45,000 pounds or gross 80,000. And, and with that spec, you could generally move from tankers to reefers or something like that. And the problem with doing a, a specialized spec, like for heavy haul, for instance, is then you're stuck in that market because your, your truck is too heavy to do anything else. And that, that limits the number of jobs that you can have. So I, I, I would try to pick a general spec truck. And that way you can move it around as, as you need to, as one market, as one freight market dries up, or as a different carrier appeals to you down the road or a different type of work. Go for a general spec, something something that weighs, you know, like 19,000 uh, pounds and can pull a, a 45, 46,000 pound load with, with the appropriate trailer. That way you're not bound into one specific type of work. All right, chat, that will about do it for us today. If you enjoyed what we talked about here today and you want to listen to a little bit more about um, these kind of things, uh, we actually are going to leave a link in the description down below to a playlist to a number of videos that actually cover similar things to what we talked about here today. So be sure to check out that link to get over to that playlist. Um, I want to thank everyone who donated today. You guys were more than generous, and thank you for being so patient with your questions while Dave went on long rant sprees there. He can get a little bit carried away, but hey, it's all valuable information, so we hope that you guys learned something here today. Um, without further ado, Dave, if you want to tell us a little bit about Friday's video here, and then we can start to wrap things up. Just, tell just, us about Friday's video. Just one thing. He's going to tell about Friday's video. And also, you, you, you get one minute to hit home on how important their job is. You gotta, you gotta say that again. Let me, let me just just reiterate one more time that that you're worth more than you're probably being paid, no matter what, because this this is a highly skilled job. Truck driving is a highly skilled job, important. and it's it's the economy depends on it. The economy depends on it. It's an important job, and it's important that you do it well, do your best, and are properly paid for it. And and I don't I don't want to scare anybody here. That was not my intention to scare anybody with the number of different dangers involved in that job. But you need to be aware. Everybody needs to be aware. The new guys need to be aware of exactly what it is they've signed up for, and make this job a profession, and have a good living, make a good living at it. Now, I am I am always going on about safety. So Friday's Friday's um, YouTube video is about something that that I feel is dangerous. It's a dangerous practice. And the FMCSA that's supposed to be patrolling the safety level of carriers is introducing something that I just I am dead set against. And I want to talk about that. That's what the Friday video is about. So please, please join us for that. 
take care. I've, I've enjoyed chatting with you. I, I, I know I get wound up when, are when I... Are, are you worn out? I, I'm not worn out. I could, I could go on about the mistreatment of truck drivers and safety issues and stuff like that. I could go on like that for hours about that because I'm so, I'm so passionate about it. But you Chad, guys before are we sign off me. here, uh, just like chat, uh, just let us know uh, in the chat if you guys want to see these longer style streams. I'm seeing a couple of people confirm that already, but if you want to um, comment in the chat now, let us know after the stream when you watch the rewatch. Just let it, let us know what kind of streams you guys um, would prefer because we'd be more than happy because um, we're starting to kind of get into these a little bit more regularly. And if you want to see more of these throughout the week, be sure to let us know and kind of what day works for you guys because we, uh, we've been looking into getting into these a little bit more frequently now that we sort of have them down pat. So, <laughs> oh, j Just a quick comment I want to read from grilled mortal I was just looking at the same yeah, he says i smell a healthy steak and pop quiz on friday who is 61 <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know grilled mortal we're not slipping out to henry's for dinner tonight Ugh. too too tough on the boat guys take care stay safe keep the rubber side down and we'll see you on the back hall we'll see you friday good night everybody <laughs>